Welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Highlights, features, and analysis with head coach Connell Maynard. Brought to you by Protective Life, Huntsville Hospital, and Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. Bulldog Band, welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Good evening and welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm your host, Ted Dixie. Coach, right off the bat, congratulations on being the 2021 Southwestern Athletic Conference football champions. Thank you, Ted. Uh, it's a great honor. Uh, but I want to thank everybody from the top up, uh, top down, uh, Donna Houghini, uh, Provost Williams, A.D. Hicks, uh, my coaches, the players, the fans, the alumni, uh, it's total uh, Hank, the equipment people, the trainers, uh, the band, the cheerleaders. I want to thank everybody, man. Everybody had a, a big part to do in it. Uh, when you win championships, uh, it's, it's the little things, and everybody got to play a big role in it, and uh, kind of did without everybody. So uh, that's a, it's a total team effort and total team win. I also want to shout out uh, the men's tennis coach for winning the SWAC championship this year also. So not just football, but also tennis. Lots of rings being selected here. The trophy that you see here is from the 2006 championship team. It's been 15 years, Coach. How does that make you feel? Feels great. You know, it's just been three for us. Um, you know, glad to get back uh, in that championship and then also win it. So uh, now we got that. We got to try to defend it. It's going to be tough. Uh, we know that. It's a great conference. It's going to be a tough game every week. And uh, we'll be ready for the opportunity and the challenge. When does the planning for next season start, Coach? Uh, it starts tomorrow. It starts tomorrow, Ted. Uh, you're always recruiting. You're always planning. You're always getting ready. Um, you know, when you, when you lose, you know, you, you stay up and you work harder trying to figure out what to do and how to get better. And when you win, you got to do the same thing. You got to try to, hey, what can we do better? Uh, because people, you don't want people to catch up to you. So, uh, and no matter if you win or you lose, you just got to keep working hard. And uh, we, fortunately, we won it and we got to keep working hard. Don't let everybody catch up. You had the conference offensive player of the year coach in a quill glass. He's coming back next year, coach. What does that do for your program? Uh, it has it has us in position. You know, I always tell everybody if you got a quarterback, you got a chance. And uh, as you've seen, uh, we got a quill glass, and that's all, he's gonna always give us an opportunity to win the football game. And uh, you know, you take championship quarterbacks, man, to win championships. You know, you, you got to have great, got to have a great signal caller. Um, and when you have that, you got a great chance, and we got it. Coach is nip and tuck in the first half of the ball game. Bulldogs trailed all the way until the second half of the game. Did you feel any need to try to do something unusual in the ball game? Did you try to press the gas somewhere? No, we really didn't try no trick plays. You know, we're in a, rever a reverse, but uh, you know, we didn't we didn't feel that we needed to trick them to be the score. We could move the ball on them. We just uh, kept shooting ourselves in the foot. But you got to take your hat off to their defense. Their defense played well. They covered us up a lot of times on some pass routes. So um, it wasn't just us playing bad. It was their great defense or good defense making us play bad and missing throws or covering us up. So Coach Gamble did a great job and hats off to Pine Bluff for getting there and, and playing a great game. We have to give a big shout out to your defensive coordinator, Coach Eastman. Took a lot on him last year, Coach, trying to get the defense to understand his scheme. But this year it paid off, especially in the championship game. Yeah, yeah, been a lot of talk about the defense, you know, and uh, Coach Eastman and those guys did a great job, had a great game plan. Uh, like I say, only gave up 21 points defensively and then gave up a late touchdown uh, and basically prevent defense. So defense played well. I think they had two turnovers. Two. Two interceptions, uh, Kelly and, uh, and uh, 29 uh, McGee. So actually he shouldn't have intercepted that ball on fourth down. He should have knocked it down and we'd have got the ball back at like the 30-yard line. But, you know, <laughs> in the heat of the moment, step. heat of the moment, you know, he, he picked it because the guy actually tried to knock the ball out from behind him. Mm. And, you know, that's what you don't want to happen. You get an interception on fourth down, then they knock the ball out and get it back. And they got a chance to win the game right there. So you can always, they're always learning the opportunities and we're going to learn from that. Coach, we saw you at the end of the ball game. I got a chance to be on the sideline this season. So thank you so much for that. I got to see you try to tell the student athletes that it wasn't over that even when you got the lead, that it wasn't over. Even when the clock was running down, that it wasn't over. You were still trying to get players in the right position. About 30 seconds left in the game. Yeah, the game wasn't over. I tried to tell them that when we went up uh, 14, uh, they were doing a lot of celebrating on the sideline. And I had to try to go. I wanted to tell those guys, listen, 
stop celebrating. The game ain't over. Uh, still got a lot of football left. And, uh, you know, uh, last year against uh, Texas Southern, I mean, we was down 14, 13 points with three minutes left, and we came back and won the football game. So those guys got to understand that you got to continue doing what you were doing to get you that lead and stay focused. And when the game is over with, then you can celebrate and not before. And of course, Coach, we're going to see a great deal of footage for the celebration. I'd like to thank you so much to the support staff for capturing all the images that you've seen on the Alabama a and Football Review this year. And please, when you're watching the sponsors' commercials tonight, please make a note and go visit them because they support the Bulldogs, so we want to support them. When we come back, we'll have more with Coach Maynard right here on the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach, Connell Maynard. Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, a church with a big heart of love. Located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama. Under the leadership of Dr. O. Wendell Davis. The worship services begin at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. Now, we pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Ariel took down enough pins to help win a conference championship. Her mechanics are just as strong in engineering. Aiden is mastering psychology on the golf course and in the classroom. No hurdles too high for Raven on the track or in nutrition. Alabama A&M, four years of artistic, academic, and athletic discovery. We deliver the full university experience. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Engineering and science usually look like this, but our students build race cars from the ground up, explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere.
Thank you so much for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm your host, Ted Dixie. Those are some fabulous commercials, and we want you to please support our sponsors. Coach, this is the 2006 trophy. We get another one for 2021, but we don't know what the trophy is. Well, we know what the trophy is. We just don't have it. Um, uh, Hank Harris has it. You know, he always bring them back on, on his truck with him so they won't break. And uh, he got the trophy. So we'll have it uh, later on today. We just don't have it now. Coach Harris says this will be his last year, Coach. I don't know about that. You know, I, I, I got to <laughs> talk to Hank. You know, he, he talking to me right now crazy. So we, you know, he did the moment. We'll talk to him. We'll get him what he need. And we hopefully we'll keep him around. He's been around here 31 years. Mm. No time for him to lead now. So we got to defend our championship. You got everything in place that you wanted, Coach, to win a championship. Well, last year you said we were early and had an opportunity to win the East. This year, would you say we're right on time? Yeah, yeah, last year, you know, we had a great opportunity, uh, but we would have been probably a year early. And uh, right now we're right on schedule, third year, uh, to be competing for a championship. And, of course, we did that and, and got in the championship game and got the win. So, um, you know, they give you four years, and we did it in three. So. You could say we might be just one year ahead of schedule, but uh, I kind of thought that we had a great opportunity to do it this year, and this was our year. And that's what we talked about the whole year uh, in, in uh, camp and uh, throughout camp is, is winning it this year. Coach, speaking <clears throat> of four years, you've got some news to announce to the Bulldog faithful, don't you? Yeah, uh, I think most people know I, I got a four-year extension on my contract. Still had one left, so now I got five. So uh, it stands through 25, uh, 2025, so uh, I'll be a Bulldog until then. But I need some great support. I need support. I need support. And, of course, make room on your fingers for more rings. We'll take a look at the second half highlights, and then we'll come back and talk more with the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Coach of the Year. No, he is the Coach of the Year because he's got the trophy. Connell Maynard back here on the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. Darrell brings new energy to the power plant. Julian's accounting is by the numbers. There's student interns from the College of Business and Public Affairs at Alabama A&M University, where marketing class connects with the community and companies come to recruit. So while Kyle strengthens his managerial skills, he's earning a business degree and experience at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Bulldog fans, the Alabama A&M Athletics Department is calling on you to help our student athletes. The Bulldog Strong Fund focuses on our student athletes by encouraging competition. During this global pandemic, competitive excellence takes on a new definition for our Bulldogs. This fund enhances our efforts to ensure our athletic department can service each team to become a prominent national competitor in all aspects of NCAA Division I athletics. Donation to the Bulldog Strong Fund will be used to cover student athletic scholarships, supporting recruiting efforts, and creating additional health and wellness initiatives. We are under tough and challenging times, but with your support, the Bulldog Strong Fund will thrive. Donations of all sizes make a huge difference and are greatly appreciated. Visit amusports.com to learn more about the Bulldog Strong Fund and how you can donate now. Thank you in advance for your continued support of Alabama A&M Athletics and our student athletes. Go Bulldogs! Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station. Alabama A&M University, where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere.
attempt the point after. Thank you for watching the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm your host, Ted Dixie. Coach, when we started to look at the statistics over the season, Aquil Glass accounted for um, an ungodly number of statistics, being number one in the conference, but being overall number one in the nation is definitely something special. And the one that sticks out to me is him being responsible for 28 points a game. That's number one in the nation. When you got a great quarterback, it gives you a great opportunity to win, not only win games, but win championships. And that's what a quill does. Um, you know, 28 points right off the bat. All you got to do is start him and you got 28 points. But at the end of the day, it's a team game. Mm -hmm. it's just, and uh, uh, the offensive line, if you look at the game yesterday, I mean, he's just standing back there like it's seven on seven. I think he got hit twice the whole football game. And uh, so you got to take your hats off to the offensive line for giving him mm, a yep. great pocket and yep. time to throw the football. And then you got the, great, the best receivers in, in, in the nation um, in, in our receiving core that gets open and make catches. Uh, the catch that Xavier Moore made in the corner of the end zone, I mean, that's a, that's a sports center catch, man. So when you got a quill glass throwing the receivers like that and making catches like that, and then, you know, look at the first play of the game when he wide open, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's a pleasure to coach those guys and see those guys work so hard. But what people don't know is, you know, after they have great games, the very next day they're out on the football field. You know, after every practice, they there early, they there late. That's right. But that's what the great guys, that's what the great players do. You know, and guess what? All our players ain't out there, but our All-Americans are. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we try to use that for motivation and examples to show them, hey, Abdul out there on the field, Zay out there on the field, Quill out there on the field, Gary out there on the field, OJ out there on the field, you know, Terrell out there on the field, Jenkins out there on the field. And it's a reason those guys are good. Mm. They put in, they pay the price, you know, and you can't cheat this game. You're going to get out of it what you put in it, and those guys put a lot in it. They're in the weight room every day on their off day. They're on that field throwing. So they're going to be this workout all summer, and uh, they, they want to be better than they were this year. OJ got something to prove. He, he, didn't, he didn't make all conference. Zay led the nation in passing yards per catch, <laughs> and he's second team. You know, Abdul was still first team, but, you know, those guys – they got something to prove still. That's so, right. um, you know, we can't wait to see what those guys do next year. Very excited about the potential of those guys. Talk about, Coach, now the, how the recruiting is going to go. People have asked me, are you going to bring in a new class? How's that work now? Well, we don't have so many scholarships. So, um, depends on how many seniors we bring back um, and, and then how many scholarships we got left. So, we probably won't be able to bring in but maybe <clears throat> eight guys. Mm. Uh, eight guys, we'll bring back all these seniors. We're going to bring back this team and probably add about eight more and uh, try to get some more depth and uh, strengthen up a couple of spots, and we'll go from there. And, of course, Coach, in playing for next season, we've got a big home slate next season. We didn't have a home game this year. That was a little unusual to win the conference mm -hmm. and not have a home game. But, Coach, you got over that hump. What's it going to be like to walk out into the field in the Lewis Cruz Classic next year with the trophy in hand? Uh, for, Ted, I hope it's the greatest uh, sight I've seen since I've been here. I hope it's sold out. Um, standing room only. Uh, that's what I expect. You know, um, they got to come back and, and uh, honor these champions and honor the 21 championship. And, and next year's 21 too. So right. when we win that, how, how are we going to do that? We're going to have two 21 trophies. <laughs> hey, that's what we're going to try for. Uh, so 
Um, again, hopefully it's sold out and it's standing room only. And we really, these guys really show how much they appreciate uh, all the hard work and sweat and tears that these guys support in this program. Uh, getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning to be at practice by 5.30 and uh, lifting weights and watching tape and still going to school. We had 12 guys to graduate Friday. Uh, we had and, to wait on them, no matter of Yeah, fact. we had to wait an extra hour, so we was an hour behind. But it's okay because those guys, uh, we got what they're – their parents wanted to see Amen. and their parents dream of them walking across that stage and them being able to be there and support them. And I hung around and took some pictures with them and their parents and it was just a great uh, atmosphere and a great situation to see those guys walk across the stage because that's what I promote for those guys to get that, that ring, that graduation is their first ring and gold. And then they turn around uh, for some 27, 28 hours after that and get a championship on the football field. So. That's probably the greatest weekend of their lives. Um, I was talking about it earlier. The only weekend I think you could possibly could match that is mm. get married on Friday and win the Super Bowl on Sunday. <laughs> so uh, other than that, I don't think you can match what them guys done this weekend. And of course, Coach, you know, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about when those guys committed to come to Alabama and them and the academic support team around them to make sure that they can get their work done. Yeah, we told them that. You know, We're going to send them to summer school, get you at least six hours in summer school every year. And uh, then you go to class, you get your 25, 24 to 30 hours, uh, and you'll be out of here in three, three and a half years. Uh, we want to make sure that they get that degree because that's what it's all about. Football ain't going to last for so long. It's the best part-time temporary job you can ever have mm. if you can get there. And that's what I'm talking about is the NFL. It stands for not for long. So, uh, you know, we, we tell our guys, I love for all of y'all to play in the NFL, but reality, you're not, it's not going to happen. You are going to go professional. And something, it probably just won't be football. And, of course, Coach, <clears throat> now you've got dreams and aspirations of things you want to see here on campus for your program. What are we going to do about that? Uh, well, uh, you know, we're winning, and uh, everybody want to be a partner. Everybody asks what can they do. So we'll let them know what we need, and then we got to get it. we got to get it done. You know, we need a training table, and uh, we need a lot of stuff. So, Absolutely. Um, We'll, we'll get it. We want to keep this ship rolling in the right direction and, and stay on championship road. This is what struck me, Coach, when we're at the game Saturday. Someone comes down out of the stands and we get them on the sideline. That was number one, Jordan Bentley. Oh, yeah, Jordan Bentley was there. Uh, you know, workhorse from last year, uh, great young man. And uh, he graduated and uh, he's moving on with his life. He had opportunity to go to the HBCU Combine. He was invited. And uh, he turned it down because oh, wow. he understands, you know, uh, that degree and, and what it means. And he's already in the workforce and got a good job. And he said thanks, but no thanks. He appreciated the opportunity, but he didn't need to go work out. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I told the guy that. I said, he probably won't come. I said, but I let him know. Okay. And we let him know, and he didn't go. So um, he understands, you know, uh, what's important, getting that education, getting that degree, and family life, and, and just being the best man you could be. And that's what you want and that's what you try to produce from your student athletes. Coach, in our final segment, we want to make sure that we mentioned our condolences and our hugs to some family members for the Bulldogs who we lost during this season, especially some of those who are on our game day staff. Melinda Satcher Ewing and of course Erskine Valry, who, I mean, he's just a great guy to be around every day. And I loved hanging, hugging those people before a game and shaking their hands, Coach. You like a family atmosphere around your program. I do. I do. And I'm just uh, saddened. And I wish they could have been here to see the championship. I know they've been waiting for it for a long time. They die hard Bulldogs. And uh, uh, sorry they weren't here. And condolences to your families. Folks, enjoy the highlights that you see. If you want to know about season ticket information, go to aamusports.com. That's aamusports.com for season ticket information. I've got mine. Get yours. So for our crew here around the world and here on campus at Alabama a and happy Founders Day to the Bulldog faithful. And we will see you again next season for another Bulldog Southwestern Athletic Conference Championship right here on the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. Go Bulldogs. In my Ric Flair voice, woo! <laughs> Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, a church with a big heart of love. Located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama. 
under the leadership of Dr. O. Wendell Davis. The worship services begin at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. Now, we pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Parker is 29 and learning to communicate again. The students teaching him earn a degree with 100% job placement. But the real reward is changing a life. At Alabama A&M, it's a university where agencies actually go to recruit compassionate students who help themselves by helping others. Service is sovereignty at Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station. Alabama A&M University, where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs, or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Bulldog fans, thank you for joining us today for the Alabama A&M University Football Review. Bulldog faithful, we encourage your support and participation. Until next time, go Bulldogs!